moving on with our level creation, the first thing we need to do is bring in our terrain, basically create our first piece of terrain. So here's how we're going to do this. I want you to bring your mouse up to the main menu bar at the very top of the Unity interface, go into terrain, and click on create terrain. Boom! You've just made terrain, video done. Okay, not really. What has come in is a gigantic piece of terrain. It's something like two kilometers by two kilometers, which is a whole lot more than we need, and we're going to be changing that. But I'd like to show you this great big block of terrain, so we've got to get into just a little bit of uh, viewport rotation, viewport navigation. And that's something we're going to talk about in a lot more depth later, but you do need to know the basics. So let's get that out of the way. I want you to hold down the Alt key on your keyboard. Now, I use the, the left Alt button, and I generally hold it down with my thumb, but you do whatever you like. And if you drag with the left mouse button, you are tumbling the camera around. And as I do that, you can see we can take in the entirety of our massive terrain. And really, because we have no sense of scale, no point of reference, it's hard to get an idea of how big this is. But trust me, it's big. Actually, create a sphere. In a minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just show them how big it really is. Yeah, I, I don't want to get too uh, too carried away just yet, but uh, you're absolutely right. If we were to create any other object in this scene right now, we would see that this really is, uh, it's like what, a, a, you know, X number of kilometers? Yeah, well, four, two, square, two, yeah, four, four square, square kilometers. kilometers. I wouldn't even want to jog that if I didn't have to. Now, still sticking with navigation for just a moment longer, if you hold down the Alt key again, you can click and drag with your middle mouse button, which is uh, your mouse wheel for a lot of you, and if you don't have a, a mouse wheel, hopefully you have a three-button mouse, and you can pan the camera around. This is just kind of like sliding the camera left, right, up, and down. And if you hold down Alt and click with the, or I'm sorry, drag with the right mouse button, you can dolly the camera in and out. Now the mouse is doing something really interesting right now, that even if you come to, the, to Unity from like a 3D package, like Maya, for instance. Now, if, you, if you're already a Maya person, all of that navigation I just showed you, you probably know by heart. But there is a slight difference here in that Unity does screen wrapping with the cursor while you're navigating. So uh, if I am holding down the Alt key and dragging with right mouse to dolly in and out, watch the cursor very carefully. You'll see that we make it to the top of the view, and then we wrap around from the bottom, and you can just continue pushing the mouse because of that. You'll never reach the screen extent and suddenly not be able to navigate anymore. The only thing to be a little bit aware of if you're on a setup like what we have, where you have multiple monitors kind of scattered across your desk, uh, you will. It, it does get a little bit interesting if you're dragging left to right because you are not going over into the other monitors right now. I am wrapping right around to the monitor that uh, Unity is running in. So keep that kind of thing in mind. It's a little thing, but you should be aware of. So one more time, just as kind of a review, Alt and left is tumble, Alt and middle is pan, Alt and right is dolly in and out, which if you want to call it zooming, call it zooming, though technically zooming is something else. Okay, I've beat that dead horse, or I've beat that horse to death, I think is <laughs> how that goes. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is name your terrain. Before we do anything to change its enormously oversizedness, uh, if you leave the name here at new terrain, and then later on while you're working on your project, if you create other new terrain, say for other levels, and don't name them, it can be very difficult to remember which one goes with what. So I'm going to click on this once here inside the project panel. Now, if you are still using the default Unity layout, your project panel is here in just about the middle of your screen down toward the bottom. If it is anywhere else, then before you continue, before you click on anything, because this is really the first time we've had to use any part of the modular Unity interface, I want you to make sure that you come up here to layout in the upper right-hand corner of the Unity interface and come to revert factory settings. Once you do this, it'll ask you, you know, are you sure you want to do this? Now, I'm not going to. Mine's already at factory settings, and then I'd have to expand back out to full screen, and I don't want to have to bother with that. But if you can't see your project panel here in the middle, down toward the bottom, then make sure you do revert to factory settings. That'll put everything right back where it belongs, and you'll be able to follow with exactly what I'm seeing. So now, here inside your project panel, click on New Terrain just once. Don't double-click. And if you click right on the name, you'll notice that you can now rename. And we're going to call this... Snow World Terrain. And you can call it anything you want, as long as you remember what it's called. Because later on, like I was saying, if you did happen to create a whole bunch of other terrains, and toward the end of your project you're thinking, oh, I've got all these extra terrains, I should just start cleaning up the ones I'm not using, it's very tricky to remember which ones you are using versus which ones you're not. And if you delete the wrong one, that's not undoable. 
And now this terrain that you've created, that you've perfected, it looks fantastic, is now just gone. So be sure to rename things. And uh, backing up your project is also a good idea, but we'll talk about that at another time. So now we've got our terrain renamed. The next thing we want to do is make this terrain uh, a bit smaller, a bit more manageable for the demonstration we're doing. So I want you to go back up under the terrain menu, the very top, and come down to set resolution. If you click on this, you'll get a separate window that pops up with all of these fantastic settings. Now I'm not going to go into uh, a lot of the uh, real details about what these settings do right now. We're going to save that for some terrain dis uh, discussions a little bit later on. But for now, just follow along with me. The terrain width setting, we're going to pull down to 256. Terrain height, I'm going to pull down to 200. Terrain length, also to 256. So it's a square. It can only go up to a, a height of 200 meters. These measurements are in meters, by the way. We're going to take the height map resolution and pull that way down. So from 512 plus 1, which is 513, I'll explain that in just a moment, we're going to set this to 128. As soon as I do that and press enter, notice it jumps to 129. The reason for that is you have to think about this terrain like a grid. And if I described a grid for you that was 128 grid spaces wide and then told you to count the lines that touch each grid space, you'd come up with 129 lines because there's always that one extra at the end. Now, that's not exactly how it works. Really, what we're counting is the points that make up the, uh, the polygons along the edge of the terrain. But it's the same idea. That's yeah. why it actually increments your, uh, your value by one number. Next, we're going to take our detail resolution and set that way down to 128 because we don't need it to be very high. I'm going to pull our detail resolution per patch down to 8. Technically, I think we could, well, I'm sure, we could actually get away with a much lower value for detail resolution, like 64, but I'll leave it at 128 for now. What that's going to do is later on when we add things like rocks to our terrain, they're really going to pour all over the place. We'll end up with a lot of rocks getting piled up each time we click the mouse, but that's okay. Now, finally, we have two more. We have the control texture resolution. And I'll go into more about what this is later on in the terrain uh, reference discussion. We're going to pull that down to 128. And the base texture resolution, we're going to cut in half down to 512. So really, what we're doing is just reducing all of these values. And by doing that, we're going to end up with a terrain which has a much faster response. It'll lead to a much smaller level. As, uh, as I click the set resolution button, you'll see everything gets a lot tinier which is going to be much nicer for our demonstration. Now, if on your own you're thinking, oh, but I want to create a massive terrain, that's great, and, and I encourage you to do that. But if, you, uh, if you're just trying to learn, I highly recommend you follow along, as I'm doing for now, because it'll lead to a much uh, overall faster response, and a lot of things that we do will make a lot more sense, because there's kind of less work to do. So with that, we have set up our terrain. We've got it in place. We've got the resolution established for it. We've got it named. It's in our project, ready to go. The only other thing that I would like to do, and it's kind of a matter of preference. You don't have to do this. I would like to encourage you to keep things organized early on in your Unity career. So down here inside your project panel, you'll notice there's a little tiny Create dropdown. I want you to click on that, and at the very top, click on Folder. Now what this has just done is created a folder inside your project. Also, it's created a folder in your operating system. It's a real folder actually on your hard drive. Uh, just like when you're inside your OS like Windows and you save you know, file, new folder. We're going to rename this the same way. Again, we're just going to click on it, wait a second after we click, and there we go. We can change the name, and we will call this Terrains. Press Enter, and now all I'll do is grab the Snow World Terrain and drag it down into the Terrains folder and things are nice and neat and organized. And with that, that's all I have for this video. Really, I think I did all the talking. Lee, did you have anything else you want to throw out? There's one thing I would recommend doing. What's that? Here in the setup mm -hmm. is to go to the hierarchy panel mm -hmm. and rename your train there to match your mesh. Uh, in the that's a good idea, and I completely overlooked that. So we'll name them both the same thing. So we have Snow World Terrain, and we'll come over here to the hierarchy panel, which is on the left-hand side, just to the left of your project panel if you're using factory settings. And I already went over that if you're not, you should be. And we will set this to Snow World Terrain. All right. There'll be well. much more in-depth discussion on what each one of these are, but one is basically an object, and the other is the mesh mm -hmm. that's behind it. And all we're doing is keeping them 
named the same. So when you look at these different panels, you understand what mesh is going with what game object. Exactly. It's just kind of a visual correlation so that if we come back to this level later, and then in this project, you know, we may have multiple levels. Mm -hmm. And each one of those levels may have one or more terrains inside of it. And it would be a lot easier to say, like, oh, here in this level, we're using the Snow World terrain because that's what it's named in the project folder as well. And thanks for reminding me because no I had totally forgotten. But with that, that will wrap up this video, and we will catch you guys in the next video where we will start to shape this terrain out.